Hi, I need a aluminium tray like this one, but I want it to be watertight and if the walls aren't flapping in the breeze that would be plus as well. As you can see this is very thin sheet metal. You can try welding this with thick, but don't be surprised if you end up with aluminium ball. This is a very simple water chiller and I have made this heat exchanger with aluminium heatsink and I just glued there some brass pipes with silicone. If only we could solder these parts easily, right? So I have done a little bit of research and created an alloy. And I have soldered these two pieces to check how it looks like and how it feels like and you know, stuff like that. And it's actually pretty good and as you can see even strong. So I have made rods like this and these work well for the test but they suck a lot of heat from your workpiece so they will be no good for the aluminum tray. I have already planned how to deal with this problem though. Since this alloy does have a low melting point you can use glass containers to make it. You will also need some zinc metal. I am using zinc from A batteries because in this country apparently they don't sell solid zinc for some reason. You can't really use zinc powder because it will oxidize. I have also made some dendritic zinc with electrolysis and it works, but it also does oxidize quite a bit so it's not good really. Next metal you need is tin. I am using lead free solder which is 96% tin, 3% is silver and 0.5% copper, rest seems to be resin. I want to make about 50 grams of this stuff so I measure about 25 grams of solder. Now I'm going to melt it because I want to get rid of the flux. This is very easy and straightforward process, you will need only about 230 degrees celsius. Depends on how much flux you get there, you can either burn it or you can pour the tin on some surface and separate it that way. The container with flux of course will be quite ugly so I'm going to pour this to a separate container. Ok, so this looks pretty good and now I'm going to weigh it again. There will be very little difference really and I'm going to eyeball the ratio anyway so doesn't really matter. But this way it is scientific, right? Ok, so now I'm going to use about same amount of zinc. So that is about 25 grams and the more zinc you use the higher the melting point will be. Which actually may be very well what you want. Now I'm going to remelt tin and dissolve zinc in it. This should be a very quick process, depending on the temperature of course. It also may happen that your alloy will freeze, which is quite unlikely actually, but it can happen. Or you can actually run out of gas and realize that you don't have canister nearby and had to use HHO instead, right? Well, in any case, the zinc is dissolved and you are basically done. Kinda. Now if you wonder how I made these rods, I basically just use a pipette. So basically get a glass tube, snap it so it's sharp, mount it to a pipette with tape for example and then just preheat it so there's no water and suck the metal in. If you let this cool down to room temperature you can easily push the rod from the inside. And here is how it looks like. It seems this one is a little bit rich in zinc as you can see by the crystals all over the thing. Now as I have already told you these thick rods are not very good for soldering thin sheet metal. So I will transfer this alloy into another special container. I am just removing moisture because moisture can make metal explode. And this one can burn you quite badly. Now I understand that some of you wouldn't be surprised if like one day I decided to make my own wires. And normally I would tell you that come on don't be ridiculous, that's stupid. And in my defense though I would go to my local welding supplier if I could, right? It's just these are difficult times. Anyway, with tin you can quite easily pull a string from molten pool of material and it will form a relatively nice looking wire. After a while I realized that this doesn't probably work here because the temperature is too high. So I started cooling the wire that I am pulling from the molten material and this worked quite well. But it was still quite tricky and very slow. The best what I was able to achieve was like 30 cm piece and it's quite ok but not what I was expecting. After looking at the molten material that I was pulling out for some time, 
I quickly realized what I have to do. So here's the setup. With a short piece of wire, touch the molten material and let these two melt together. Then use some wet cloth or towel to cool the wire and pull at the same time. There will be some oxide layer on the molten material. This will form a conical shape that will hold the radius of the wire that you are pulling out. By cooling this material quickly, it means that it will be stronger, so it will be easier to handle. And also you are solidifying it towards the molten liquid, so it's like you are pulling it from inside this oxide layer. In fact, the whole surface of this metal is covered in oxide layer, so this means that you can pull out the whole content, even if it means that the metal has to go like uphill. As far as cooling goes, you will probably need mechanical contact with the wire, because of Leiden force defect. Overall, this process is quite fast and reliable. I was able to make about 4 or 5 meters of wire, and obviously because I was pulling this wire by hand, the consistency is not perfect. Also, the design of this glass container is not ideal. I mean, after each meter of the wire that you pull, you have to stop and refill the content. In any case, this is what I've got. Looks like a lifetime supply if you would ask me. Now, if my calculations are correct, we should be able to use just hot plates to solder smaller pieces. It almost feels like the aluminium is sucking that wire. You really can't feel any resistance at all. Okay, so let's finish our tray. That's why you are here, right? I'm starting rather cold here because it's easy to melt the aluminium, especially if you contaminate it with something. So the wire is barely melting initially. Unfortunately, I don't have reliable temperature probe right now, so... I would say the temperature is about 375.6 degrees Celsius. In any case, after the aluminium got a little bit hotter, it's much better to work with. The biggest problem is that this piece is quite small and delicate. So I cleaned up all four edges from the inside, so there's not any blobs. Then I turned this thing upside down and finished it from the outside. I guess this wasn't really necessary and I probably shouldn't turn it upside down because the solder is still liquid. It wasn't such a big deal really, it's just a little bit messy. And finally I cooled the piece rapidly by putting some wet towel on it. And here's the final result. I mean, it looks okay-ish. I'm pretty sure I would be able to do a better job next time. But come on, it's Trey. And here is close-up of my favorite corner. I'm pretty happy with this one. It's almost like I could do this for a living. But the most important question. Is it watertight? At least it looks like it's watertight enough. I guess I should have done some pressure test on this thing, but um, I don't have compressor. Nah, I'm just kidding. The most important thing is how strong this thing is. I am no Rambo, but it looks pretty strong. Even though the aluminium is softened by the heat, it looks like this is as strong as the aluminium itself. Of course, I don't have instruments to determine mechanical properties, so you have to take my word for it. I do have cheap pliers though, slightly bent and corroded. Yeah, this looks pretty good. So, the conclusion. 